barbershop conversation guys feel free hit the subscribe button save the date september 28th in the a.m save the date i have more details to come uh we're gonna do it bigger and better than why do they say everything is bigger and better in texas black fight fan la we're gonna show you how we run it <laughs> we about to be bigger and better <laughs> y'all take that lone star shit let me detach y'all motherfuckers from from America. Why don't y'all just go float? Go float y'all motherfuckers down the Pacific Ocean or some shit, man. Go join Mexico or some shit like that. <laughs> Anyways, man. Hey, I just heard an interview with AB Boxing News. AB Boxing News. Go ahead and go subscribe. And you know what one thing I noticed? When you mention Dillian White's name to Deontay Wilder, he turns into the Bronze Bomber. <laughs> hey, hey. Hey, you can totally see his whole disposition change when he mentioned Dillian White's name. He wants to, man, man, ooh, he wants to, de man, I, 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 I really can't go in on this topic right now because it's uh, where boxing is in mourning today, so I, 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 I want to be respectful to that, but. What's understood don't have to be explained, man. Dillian White lying and claiming that he's been a mandatory for 600 days when he didn't fight for the uh, eliminator. He had two eliminators. He had, my understanding, he had an eliminator with Dominic Brazil and Deontay Wilder granted him an exemption if he would have fought Luis Ortiz and he would have fought him if it was in the contract to fight Anthony Joshua. So it's just... Dylan White needs to go fight. Uh, he needs to. If I'm Dylan White, he's an independent contractor, right? He promotes himself. He needs to have another meeting with Steven Espinoza. Because, and, and you say, why, Fred? I'm not telling him to go to Showtime. I'm telling him to get into the American market. All right? Because without the American market, you're just going to be basically a club fighter. You know, um, America is where it's at. He has declining numbers over in the UK. He went from sellout to $12,000. I mean, 12,000 people, which is a 50% decrease. You know, so, so that means he's a declining asset. He doesn't have as much value as he did. His success is contingent upon Anthony Joshua's success because that was the very next big card after... Anthony Joshua and people were very much so disinterested, you know, the imagination and infatuation with Deion, I mean, excuse me, with uh, Anthony Joshua went away with Anthony Ruiz Stoppage, you know, and um, um, it's, uh, he needs to tap into the American market before he runs out of time because he has some into hardcore boxing fancy. His name has value, you know, um, He's been, I didn't watch the fight, but I heard about it. I'll watch it at some point. I didn't watch no fights. I didn't watch Tia Fimo, nor did I watch, uh, I've only saw the Tank Davis stuff. Um, I think that uh, he better get over here to America ASAP. And he needs to be a co-main event somewhere or a main event somewhere because he promotes himself. You know, to my understanding, he, he promotes himself still. I don't know if he's signed a contract with Eddie Hearn since then, but uh, uh, he better get to America. I don't know if it's with Fox, ESPN. Um, but he needs to come over here to America where people call him Dillian. <laughs> you don't want to be called Mr. White anymore, right? <laughs> Anyways, man, I, 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 I enjoyed the interview with... Uh, Deontay Wild. I, I enjoy all his interviews, man. And I'll say this too. We were um give you guys some insight. Deontay and Wilder and I were together Friday night, not on not on purpose, but by accident. Um we both were invited somewhere and he ended up showing up there. And I'll I I'll, I'll keep it real. I saw how he reacted how he reacted to uh, uh, Dillian White. He wants to, man, man, 
Y'all know what man, man mean. Like when a nigga so mad he can't come up with the words to describe how he feels. That's how uh, Deontay Wilder feels about Dillian White. And uh, all my UK fans who's going to uh, hear this, make sure y'all go support him. He has some events over in the UK on July 27th. Go out and support him, man. Go, go, go have dinner with the champ. Just go to his website, Google it, Deontay Wilder, Bronze Bomber. And, um, um, but it's, it's, uh, the heavyweight division is fun. The middleweight, excuse me, the welterweight division is fun. And we just need somebody at 126 to go off and trust themselves and have faith and fight a big fight. None of the motherfuckers at 126 are fighting each other, you know? And, um, but we'll see. Uh, I'm curious to see what happens at 160. I want to see who's going to break first. You know, I want to see like, what's the first domino to fall there. So we can get some unification bouts. It's not necessarily unification. It's just the best fighting the best, you know? Mm. So I, I'm pretty much certain Andy Ruiz is going to be fight of the year. You know, it's nothing. I mean, that's the biggest upset of the year. So it's going to be hard to uh, to uh, to do it. But I think right now the fight of the year and you guys can feel free to agree or disagree, but the Manny Pacquiao Keith Thurman is probably fight of the year right now. It's about fight of the year. I think Andy Ruiz, Anthony Joshua is more event performance of the year as opposed to fight of the year because it was very one-sided. You know, it, it wasn't back and forth like Manny Pacquiao, Keith Thurman. I would, that, that would be one of my leading candidates. Performance of the year, J-Rock is going to come in a distant second because of, the cultural ramifications to uh, Andy Ruiz beating Anthony Joshua, but I thought uh, um, J Rock put up a hell of a performance as it relates to performance of the year. He'll probably come in, he's in second place right now. Uh, what happened early in the year? I think nothing else has been too memorable. You know, uh, Earl dominated. Uh, Caleb Plant's performance was last year. That was December. Um, against Uzataki. Uh, yeah, so I think that, that pretty much sums it up. I think those are the performance. Fight of the year right now is probably Keith Thurman, Manny Pacquiao. And performer and performance of the year is probably Andy Ruiz, upset of the year. You know, So that's where we're at. So. Um, so be sure if you mention Dillian White's name around Deontay Wilder, he's going to turn into the bronze bomber ASAP. <laughs> you hear his tone, go to AB boxing news and check out the interview. Safe travels champ. Uh, you're heading over to the UK. Um, I guarantee you, Billy Joe Saunders will have the utmost respect from you this trip <laughs> moving forward. So, uh, be prepared. Tyson Fury will quote unquote accidentally will accidentally run into you somehow, some way. And uh, he's going to promote something. So anyways, man, barbershop conversation, man. You guys have a great evening. Don't forget, September 28th, uh, we're going to do something big out here in Los Angeles. They say everything is bigger and better in Texas, but the best and the biggest is in L.A. All right? And uh, uh, August 25th, that's the working date right now for my second annual backpack giveaway. That's Lincoln's event. My son, he he put it on last year. He's going to put it on again this year. It should turn out to be a hell of an event. Uh, I'm looking at somewhere in Inglewood right now. And uh, it's, it's going to be a great event. So um, we're going to give away over 100 backpacks. And um, it's going to be fun. So um, feel free to come on out, sit out with me and... Get some school supplies. Have a great time. We're going to have a ball. We're going to have a blast. We're going to do it for the kids one time. One time. And um, that's basically it, man. That's all I got. And, uh, oh, <laughs> I was going to do a video on this, but he said Eddie Hearn should have an L chain because he takes <laughs> he takes L's all the time. Go check out AB Boxing News, man. He be grinding, man. Yeah, I uh, I ran into him and uh, we actually spent some time together. Not much time, but we spent a, a lot of time. He's much younger than me, so he's he, he's doing a lot of moving and shaking, you know, living his best life. So, um, uh, he's cool, man. He, he out here hustling, man. He's uh, light years ahead of where I was, man. And 
I love this channel. So go to AB Boxing News, cool dude uh, from New York. And uh, yes, yeah, so, so go check out his channel for the interview. It's probably his last interview. It was pretty good. And rest in peace to Maxim, man. Uh, regards to your family. I don't know if there's a link to donate. I don't know if there's a link to donate. I don't know if anyone can put in the comment section a link to donate. Um, I would love to be an asset to that. And uh, even if it's just promoting it on my channel, you know, I, I, I believe it's important. Uh, because at the end of the day, we're all under the same umbrella. You know what I mean? We all love boxing. We all, and we don't want no 28-year-old potential world champion. You know what I mean? He's going to be a world champion one day. He's a hell of a fighter. You know, kids in my gym actually fought him um, years, a few years back. Go few, some time ago. I don't know how long ago it was when he was being trained by Robbie Garcia. Uh, we were talking about that today in the gym. So, but anyways, man, I uh, my condolences to his family. And, um, yeah, man, Barbershop Conversations, man. Feel free to hit the subscribe button. Safe travels, champ. And um, we'll see you when you get back. I'll holler. Peace.